The European Union could serve as a helpful model for Asia, particularly because of its experience with reconciliation and creating a peaceful community of nation states. Having seen the European experience, many people in East Asia have also made huge efforts to create a regional community such as the East Asian community. However, it has not been well developed and until today. We are still struggling with a Cold War type divided situation. The EU's experience of peaceful multilateralism is therefore a great model for us. And I believe the EU can also be a positive force to strengthen norms and values such as human rights and democracy. Many Asian countries still don't necessarily adhere to international human rights standards. The voices from European countries are very helpful in this regard. And I hope the EU will continue playing this important role in the Indo-Pacific and elsewhere. The EU strategy foresees an enhanced naval presence in the region. France and the former EU member, United Kingdom, are naval powers in the Indo-Pacific. Germany and the Netherlands have no permanent presence, but appear said to be pursuing periodic deployment to the region. In Japan, media has been widely broadcasting joint exercises of multiple countries, such as the annual Lex military exercise between Japan, Germany, Canada, Australia, and the United States, mostly with headlines around concerns regarding China. China and Russia, on the other hand, have their joint trainings and patrolling, including near the strait between Japan's territories. I'm worried about the escalation of the conflict. Asian countries, including Japan, could be the battlefield if a hot war occurs. The plea from Southeast Asian countries not to be forced to choose between United States and China is something that also fits to us, Japan and the European countries. I understand the importance of the deterrence and upholding the rules-based order. But in order to promote peace in the region, Japan and the EU need to work together to find a way beyond deterrence for all stakeholders. In 2040, I think China's position as a regional hegemon will be much clearer. At the same time, the United States and middle power countries such as Japan, India, Australia will still be competing with Beijing. China's economic development and assertiveness will grow further. Even a small incident could quickly lead to escalation. International cooperation between nations, including China and the United States, must continue despite fundamental political disagreements. The COVID-19 crisis should have been the perfect opportunity for the world to show that such a cooperation is possible. Unfortunately, what we saw instead was a lot of shaming and framing and an intensification of great power libraries. Going forward, we all must cooperate on the most pressing issues of the future, including climate change, the ongoing pandemic, and mitigating tensions between rivals.